The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17 that if you are a, a Christian, that you are a new person in Christ. Old things passed away, all things have become new. What does that mean? Are you really changed? On our program today, we're going to begin to describe this change that took place when you asked Jesus into your heart. Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to another broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Uh, on our program this week, I'm going to continue basically a thought I started on our programs last week, but we're going to be talking about our spirit, soul, and body. And the reason this is so important, let me again just refer back to my personal testimony that on March the 23rd, 1968, I had an encounter with the Lord where God just poured His love out into my life and I really experienced God in a supernatural way. And I knew that God loved me. I had that intuitive knowledge on the inside. But the problem was that I'd spent all of my life thinking that God was dealing with me based on my performance, on the way I acted and things like this. And because of it, I couldn't reconcile what I was feeling, the love of God, with what I had been taught from the Word of God about how that we, you know, all of our righteousness is as filthy rags and that we're all sinners. We've all come short of the glory of God. So my mind and my heart were experiencing two different things and it was causing a tremendous conflict in my life. And so even though I had had this tremendous encounter with the Lord to where, I mean, God just poured His love in my life, I was really struggling. And at times, it was actually more frustrating than it was before I'd had a miraculous encounter with the Lord. Now, that may seem startling to some people because they think, well, man, if God was to touch my life like that, I'd never be the same. Well, again, I think from my experience dealing with people that I've met a number of people who've had a dramatic encounter with the Lord, but they didn't know, they didn't have the understanding to be able to maintain it. Emotions will wear off. You cannot con uh, maintain a consistent Christian life with the Lord based on only how you feel. You've got to begin to start understanding some things so that you can base your life on it. So here this conflict was going on on the inside of me. And the thing that really began to change my life around was understanding spirit, soul, and body. Now, here's the reason that this teaching, and this is what I'm going to be doing all of this week, the reason that teaching was so important in my life is because one of the things I found out as I studied this, like in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, the Scripture says that man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. Mankind, even our own personal self, we tend to deal with ourselves based on our outward performance, how we look, those kind of things. For instance, if you're overweight, if you're skinny, if you're ugly or fat or, you know, anything, we tend to make those major issues and we're really concerned with that. And so man gravitates towards these external things, but God looks on the heart. And what I was realizing was that I had put my emphasis on my actions, on all of these outward things, but God was dealing with me on who I was in the heart. And what I begin to discover, what I'm going to be sharing with you is that in your heart, when you get born again, God makes you a totally brand new person. And you can't see this person in the mirror. You know, if you want to see what you look like, you can go look in the mirror and you can see if your hair is combed or all those kind of things. But you can't see your spiritual person. And about your, phys your soulish realm, you can tell how you feel. You don't have to go anywhere to look or anything. You just know whether you're encouraged or discouraged, whether you're bold or fearful, all those kind of things. But the spirit realm, you cannot perceive by your feelings. You can't look in a mirror. How do you know what is spiritual truth? Well, in James chapter 1, the scripture there says that when you look into the Word of God, it's like looking into a mirror. It compared it to a mirror. If you want to see if your hair is combed, you have to look in a mirror. You can't go by your feelings. And it's the same thing with the uh, spiritual man. If you want to see what your spirit is like, you just hold this up. It's like a mirror. And you hold this up and you look in it and you read what God's Word says about you and it is a perfect representation of what has happened to you in the spirit. And so as I began to start seeing these truths about spirit, soul, and body, here's what it did for me. I began to start recognizing that there was another me. There was a new identity that I had through my experience with the Lord that I was unaware of because I'd been looking in the mirror. I'd been just feeling how I felt in my emotional realm. But I began to discover that there was a totally brand new part of me 
And through the Word of God, I begin to get an image of this new identity. Here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, let me just use this scripture. There's a lot of scriptures that I could use on this, but this one makes it as clear as any. And it says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, that the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that scripture made it very clear that you have three parts, a spirit, soul, and body. Now, the body part of you is very easy to distinguish. I mean, that's the part that you look at. That's your hand. That's your flesh. Uh, When you look at me on this television program, you're looking at my physical body. And then we have another part that the scriptural term for it is your soul. And that's talking about your emotion part of you or what most of us consider to be our personality. For instance, if I touch your body, you can feel that physically. But, you know, through the words that I speak to you, you can also feel those. And yet there's no physical contact, but it touches your emotions. I can either make you laugh with the things that I say or I can make you cry, depending on the words that I use. And so it touches something on the inside. That's the soulish part of you. And most people are very aware that you have this physical body and that you have the soulish realm. But according to the Scripture, you have a third part, which is your spirit And like I was saying earlier, the spirit part of you, you can't see in a mirror. You can't just feel it based on your emotions. The only way to truly know what is spiritually going on on the inside of you, what you're like in the spirit, is to look in the Word of God. Another scripture goes along with this is John chapter 6, verse 63. And Jesus was the one speaking there. And He said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So God's Word is spirit. The Lord has revealed things to us through His Word that is talking about your spirit. And here's another key scripture is out of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. This is a familiar passage of scripture to a lot of people, but you really need to give some thought to this. In verse 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And see, when you get born again, the scripture says you become a totally brand new creature. Now, if you don't understand this concept of spirit, soul, and body, you won't believe this. As a matter of fact, I've dealt with a lot of people who really struggle after they pray the prayer for salvation because they were expecting to be totally brand new. This is one of the scriptures that is used often. It says, if you'll make Jesus your Lord, you become a new creature. So people pray that prayer expecting everything to just instantly change. And when they wake up in the morning, they're still married to the same person. They're still in the same physical body. And if it had problems like sickness or or loneliness or depression, you'll still feel some of those same things. And people begin to be discouraged, thinking, well, I thought everything was going to be new. But see, you can tell by a process of elimination that this isn't talking about your physical body. When you get born again, your physical body doesn't change. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that this is a mortal body and this mortal must put on immortality and this corruptible must put on incorruption. Your body is still corruptible. It's still mortal. That part of you hasn't changed. Uh, A way I like to say it is that if you were fat before you got saved, you're still going to be fat after you get saved. Your body doesn't instantly change and all things become new. Boy, now, if it was in the physical realm, there'd probably be a lot more people uh, turning to the Lord and asking for change because people know that they need physical healing and things in their body. But see, it wasn't your body that got saved. Your body is not saved. And it's also not your soulish realm. Now, this is very important because most people really believe that salvation just changes your soul immediately, but it doesn't. Your soul isn't the part that gets uh, saved. If you were stupid before you got saved, you're going to still be stupid after you get saved unless you get into the Word of God and begin to renew your mind and believe God. You don't instantly change in your mind. Your emotions don't instantly change. You know, if you were a person that was negative and a griper and a complainer, a personality trait, you're still going to have those same personality traits until you get into the Word of God and begin to change you. Now, your physical body and your soul are subject to change. That means that God wants to work change in your body and in your soul, but it's not the part of you that this Scripture is talking about. When you got born again, your physical body and your soul did not instantly change. Old things pass away, all things become new. But you know what? In your spirit, it's the only part of you that's left. Uh, Some of this is just by process of elimination. You know it's not your body, it's not your soul that we're instantly changed because you still have some of the same thoughts, you still have the same body, still recognizable. But your spirit part of you was instantly changed 
at salvation. And you became a totally new creation. As a matter of fact, one of the translations here in 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that if any man is in Christ, he is a brand new creation. And one of them even says a new species that never existed before. There is an entire complete transformation that took place in your spirit. And a scripture that's very important and relates to this is John 4.24 that says God is a spirit. And to worship God, you have to worship Him in spirit and in truth. You know, God is a spirit. God relates to you spirit to spirit. Now, He's certainly aware of your physical body and your, your soulish, mental, emotional needs. But God is a spirit and God relates spirit to spirit. That's how He communicates with you. And so, if you are going to truly worship God, you have to approach Him in your spirit. Most people aren't coming before God based on their identity, who they are in Christ, what has happened to them on the inside. But instead, they are coming and they're talking about, oh, God, see what I've done. And they're pointing out the things that they've done in their physical body. They're talking about their emotional needs and how they feel this. You know what that is? That's approaching God in what the Bible calls the flesh. The biblical term for flesh is more than just the skin on your bones, but it's talking about the part of you, the, the soulish and the physical body, the part of you that hasn't yet been redeemed. That's what the Bible means when it refers to the flesh. So if you're approaching God based on how depressed you are, how discouraged, how angry, how bitter or whatever, then you are approaching God in the flesh. You are not in the spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 says, Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So all of these things, see, this is what the Lord began to show me was that in the spirit, I was a completely brand new person, a species that had never existed before. And the scripture also says in the Old Testament, how can two walk together except they be agreed? God was looking at me and seeing me as that new person, a person that was totally changed. I was looking in the mirror and seeing my old person and seeing all of my faults and all of my failures and feeling all of my fears and things. So I was looking at myself one way, God was looking at me another, and we weren't agreed. We couldn't have the communion that we wanted to. And I was struggling understanding how God could love me because I looked in the mirror and I didn't love what I see or what I saw. And I thought, if I didn't love it, how in the world is God going to love me? But see, God sees me differently than I saw myself. God sees you differently than you see yourself. We'll take a break and we'll be back in just a moment and I'll continue talking about this spirit, soul, and body. Before we explain how to receive today's teaching, let us remind you of the special blessing that is yours through giving to the work of the Lord. Now, the anointing on Andrew's life and ministry is a gift from God and cannot be purchased. But your financial support does allow us to share these blessings daily through the Gospel Truth Program. We invite you to join this ministry outreach by sending a check today to Andrew Womack Ministries, P.O. Box 3333, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80934. Or use your credit card to make a donation by telephone. You can call 719-635-1111 between 5 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Once again, that number, 719-635-1111. And we want you to know that Andrew's complete teaching on spirit, soul, and body is available in a four-cassette audio album, number T-1027. Be sure to request that album number T-1027 when you make a donation of any amount to Andrew Womack Ministries. Or if you prefer, you can request a single tape dealing with today's subject matter titled, The Basics of Spirit, Soul, and Body. And that's single tape number TK91. Now, this single cassette is also the tape that Andrew is making available free of charge to those who are in need. We encourage everyone to make a donation of some amount, no matter how small. But we realize that some of our viewers are in financial crisis, and we want them to be able to receive this teaching free of charge. Now, whether you're able to send a donation or not, be sure to request tape number TK91 when you write or call. We will offer you this information again briefly at the end of the program. And now, Gospel Truth continues. So I want to encourage you to get these tapes that our announcer was talking about because I promise you this is the teaching that changed my life. 
On our program last week, I shared about how I had this experience that God really impacted me, created a passion in me, but it was when I began to understand some of these things. The understanding actually changed my life more than the initial contact with God did because it allowed me to walk in the uh, love that God had poured out in my heart. And today, I can say that 30-something years later, actually, it's the understanding about God and what He's taught me through His Word that sustains me and really gives me my joy and things like that. So these tapes are really important. Please take advantage of them. Now, as I was teaching, the reason that spirit, soul, and body was so important is because I knew that God was telling me that He loved me and that God had a purpose for my life. And uh, as I was teaching on our program last week, I was righteous in right standing with God. But see, when I would go look in the mirror, I'd see things that didn't please me. And I thought, how in the world could this please God? And I certainly didn't see any power. The Bible says that if you are a believer, that you can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you and all of these other things. And when I saw these promises, I would just go look in the mirror. I'd feel around in my emotional realm. And I didn't feel that joy. I didn't feel that power. I didn't feel that confidence. And because of it, I, I'd look at what God says and then I'd look at my experience and I'd think, man, this is so hard to understand. I just can't do it. It was because I was trying to find this virtue, this life and power of God in my physical body and in my soulish mental realm, not understanding that it's something that took place in my spirit. You know, before the break, I was sharing this scripture with you, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that if you are in Christ... You are a totally brand new creature, not in your body, not in your soul, the mental or emotional personality part of you, but in your spirit, you are a completely brand new person. And the rest of this week, I'm just going to get started in this today, but the rest of this week, we're going to just start looking at the Word of God, what it says has taken place on the inside. And you know what this did for me? It changed my identity. I really believe you could say it this way, that the body of Christ has an identity crisis. They don't know who they are in Christ Jesus. So when the devil comes knocking on the door and presents you with, say, sickness, poverty, anger, depression, or any of these negative things coming at us, most of us try and draw on these physical reserves in our body and in our emotion realm, not understanding what we really have in Christ. And most Christians actually feel inadequate, inferior to the devil and his uh, devices that he's attacking us with. But once you begin to see who you are in Christ, you know what it'll do? It'll build a superiority complex on the inside of you. Instead of inferiority, it'll build a superiority attitude. Because the truth is that if you have made Jesus Christ your Lord, what you have on the inside of you is identical to what Jesus has. Matter of fact, the scripture says it this way in Romans chapter 8 verse 9. It says that if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If you were truly born again, then God's spirit entered into you. Galatians chapter 4 says that God the Father sent the spirit of his son into our hearts crying, Abba, Father. And Romans 8 9, if you don't have that spirit in you, then you aren't his. So if you really believe that you were born again and that you have become a new creature, then you have to have the Spirit of Christ on the inside of you. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is already on the inside of you. You have the same wisdom, the same understanding. You have the same faith. See, this is an area most people, when it comes to talking about faith, they believe that faith works and if I was to tell you about some of the things that I've seen my faith accomplish, many of you would rejoice at it and say, Oh, that's wonderful. I wished I had faith for that. See, it's not that you doubt faith, but you don't think you have any of it. That's because you're looking in your physical body for some physical sensation or you're looking in your soulish realm for some feeling or some emotional connection. But the truth is that in your spirit, you have now been given the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's a whole other teaching. I've got, I could spend hours talking about just that one aspect. But it's true of all of these different things. You have the same faith that Jesus has. You have the same joy that God Almighty has. Some of you are thinking, man, I don't have any joy. I'm totally depressed. No, you're just searching your mental, emotional realm and maybe your physical body for how you feel. But in your spirit, you always have love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. That's what it says in Galatians 5.22. Again, I remind you, some of you say, but no, I don't have that. Yes, you do have it. 
Because here is the mirror. This is the spiritual mirror. If you want to see what's really true in your spirit, you hold up Galatians 5.22 that says you have love, joy, peace. And you say in your emotions, no, I don't. Well, it's just in your emotional realm. You may not feel it. You may not perceive it. But that's true in your spirit. And some of you may be thinking right now, well, then it doesn't matter whether it's true in my spirit or not. I've got to feel it. I want what it, what God has available for me, His love and joy and peace and power. I want it to impact this emotional realm. I want it to affect my physical body. Well, I agree. Ultimately, you are not only a spirit. You also have a soul and you have a body. And to really prosper as a Christian, you've got to get these things out of your spirit and manifest themselves in your soul and in your body. But the very first step is to start agreeing with what God says, to recognize that in your spirit you already are changed, that in your spirit you already have love, joy, and peace. It is so much easier to draw out something that you already have than it is to try and go get something that you don't have. And see, if you understand what I'm saying here today about spirit, soul, and body, this will answer questions not only about your righteous position, how you can be righteous, about your emotions, but it just deals with every area. For instance, physical healing. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2.24, by his stripes you were healed. Most people read that and think the Bible is so hard to understand because, see, they look in their physical body and they still feel sick. They may have a doctor's report that proves that they still have a physical sickness in their body, and yet the Bible says you were healed. Past tense, already done. And they say the Bible just doesn't match up with reality. Well, see, what you've got to recognize is that this physical realm, the soulish and the emotional part, is not the only realm of truth. There is a spiritual world, there is a spiritual you that you can't discern or contact through just physical, natural things. The only way you can really see into the spirit realm is to use this Bible like a, a uh, window or something to look through and to see into the spiritual realm. And the truth is that in your spirit you have been healed. In Ephesians chapter 1, it says that the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is now dwelling on the inside of you. It's not out there. See, the true way to receive healing isn't to pray and ask God to bring healing to you from the outside. But rather, it's to recognize that when you got born again, you became a brand new creature. You had God Himself literally come live on the inside of you. And the same power that raised Jesus from the dead now already lives in you. So when physical sickness hits your body, I'm not saying that what you feel isn't true, but I'm saying it's not the only truth. That's only a physical, natural truth. But there is a spiritual truth, and that is that the same virtue that it took to raise Jesus Christ from the dead is dwelling on the inside of you. And by acknowledging that, your faith will begin to be effectual. In Philemon chapter 1, verse 6, Paul prayed a prayer for Philemon, and he says, I pray that the communication of your faith would become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Notice how he said his faith would become effectual. It's by acknowledging the good things that are in you. It's not saying pray that God will give you something new, but rather if you would go to acknowledging what God has already placed on the inside of you, then your faith would be effectual. The word effectual just literally means that it work. If you want your faith to work, then you need to change this. And instead of trying to get everything from God, you need to recognize that when you got born again, God put Himself, all of His life, all of His ability on the inside of you. And you aren't in a process of trying to get more of God. God is in the process of trying to get more of you. He's trying to get what He's already placed on the inside of you, controlling your thoughts and controlling your actions. And see, it's a matter of releasing what you've got instead of going and getting something new. I'm going to be dealing with this all week long and saying this so many ways that you're going to have to have somebody to help you to misunderstand it. I really believe that. It's going to get across to you. And I want to encourage you that you need to take advantage of the tape offer that we have because this is not the kind of thing that you'll hear very often. There's very, very, very few people who are really talking about who you already are. They're telling you who you should be and telling you all of these things. And there's a place for some of that. But I tell you, you first of all have to become rooted in who you are. The problem is that we haven't known who we are. So Satan is easy to intimidate. 
or excuse me, he's easy to intimidate us. He intimidates us easily because we haven't known who we are. And I promise you, finding out who you are in Christ, finding out that you already have these things, it makes a difference. It is so much easier to release something that you already have than to try and get something that you don't know that you have. And that is what has really set me free. I still have things in my life that I need just the same as anybody else. I'm still growing. There's things that I'm believing God for. But I have a totally different attitude than so many that I minister to because I know that in Christ I've already got it. I can't doubt that I'm going to get something that I've already got. It just makes a difference in the way I think. And I promise you it'll make a difference in your confidence level. It'll make a difference in your faith level. Finding out who you are. You are a brand new person in Christ. In case there's someone listening to our broadcast today who has never received Jesus, you can become a brand new person. It's an instantaneous thing that when you believe, God works a miracle. Please call our helpline and ask for someone there who can pray with you. And also, take advantage of the tape that we've been offering about spirit, soul, and body. And join me again tomorrow on our Gospel Truth broadcast. Let us remind you that giving to support the Gospel Truth broadcast is a wonderful opportunity for you. You can share in the spiritual blessings of a ministry that focuses on the clear teaching of God's Word. And your donations make it possible for Gospel Truth to continue. And let us also remind you that Andrew's full four-tape audio album on spirit, soul, and body is available for a donation of any amount to the work of this ministry. Enclose a check requesting the entire tape series, number T-1027, and send it to Andrew Womack Ministries, P.O. Box 3333, Colorado Springs 80934. Or you can call us at 719-635-1111 to make a donation with Visa, MasterCard, or Discover, and we'll ship this teaching right out to you. If you've received our teaching today, I think that you understand how important the Word of God is. That's the way that we see the spiritual truths that the Lord wants us to understand. And you know, one of the most important things that God has done in my life is to cause me to start our Colorado Bible College. And not only the one here in Colorado Springs, but we have a college in uh, Chard, England, Ufa, Russia, and we're beginning to open one in Portugal soon. And uh, we have a tremendous curriculum, but it's not just the teaching of the Word. It's mixed with practical things. It's a two-year course. And I'd like to encourage any of you who are serious about really getting grounded in the Word of God to contact us and inquire more about this. You can call our Colorado Bible College office directly by dialing area code 719 then 635-6029. And we have somebody at our phones usually from about 8 o'clock in the morning until 4.30 in the afternoon. But I ask you to pray about this. This is something that could change your life. And we have a fall registration as well as a January registration. Please pray about this and join us for a study of God's Word.